Part one. You will hear a police detective questioning Mrs. Jones about a crime. Look at questions one to five on the form now. Listen carefully and answer the questions one to five. Hi, I'm Detective Smith. I can see you are upset, but I must ask you a few questions about the robbery. Yes, I understand. I'll try to control myself. It was so sudden. I understand. Why don't we sit down and get a cup of tea? Yes, thank you. It's okay. I'm a bit better now. Good. These things can be very disturbing, but we'll take our time. First, I need a few particulars. Let me see. Today is January seven. Now, may I have your name? Yes, Mrs. Mary Susan Jones. Thank you. Age? Thirty-eight. And your home address, Mrs. Jones? Yes, it's thirty-nine. Rose Garden Terrace. Telephone numbers. I only have a home number, four eight three four, six two nine zero. Okay. I only came out to buy some milk. I never dreamed. Yes. Now try to relax. What time did you come into the shop, Mrs. Jones? It was exactly eleven fifteen. I looked at my watch just before coming into the shop. I was worried I might not get home in time to make my husband's lunch. Look at questions six to ten. Now listen to more of the conversation between the police officer and Mrs. Jones, and answer questions six to ten. And before you entered the shop, can you remember seeing anything unusual? No, but as soon as I came in, this man walked out very quickly, nearly pushed me over. Then I saw poor Williams, the owner. I'm so glad he's not badly hurt. No, just a bump on the head. Now, this man you saw—could you say how tall he was? Well, I only came up to his shoulder, and I'm five feet four, so he must be about—I don't know—six feet. And you're not wearing high-heeled shoes, so yes, that's about right. But we have to use the metric system now, so that makes him about a hundred and eighty centimeters. Did you see his face? Not really. I didn't look up. I was so annoyed. But I do know he was wearing a black hat. I saw it as he was walking out of the door. One of those things cowboys wear. Did you notice what color hair he had? I didn't really see it. What with his hat, and me trying to keep my balance. What about the rest of his clothes? He had a jacket on, I think it was dark blue, no gray. Oh dear, I can't really say for sure. It all happened so quickly. Oh, but I do know he was wearing those big basketball shoes, red and white ones, like so many young men wear nowadays. What about his trousers? His trousers, gray. Oh dear, I can't really say. I just know they were dark. Was he fat, thin, average? Very thin, skinny. That's very useful information, Mrs. Jones. With a bit of luck, he's still around. But I expect he's got off the streets by now. I do hope you catch him. It's terrible.
That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2 You're going to hear an introduction to Big Town University's resources by the Head of Student Services. First look at questions 11 to 15. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you all here, and welcome to Big Town University. My name is Robert Black, and I'm the head of Student Services. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our university's many resources, especially those that are concerned with student welfare, rather than academic resources and research facilities. So I'll start with my department, Student Services. Our offices are all in the Students' Union building, which I'm sure you have already discovered, because that's where the student bar and cafeteria are. Basically, our job is to help you stay well, mentally and physically. Then you can better enjoy your life here, and even study sometimes. To do this, we offer a variety of services. One is our student counseling service. For many of you, it's the first time you've away from home. This can take a while to adjust to for some people, and some of you will fall in love, and then your girlfriend or boyfriend will run off with your best friend. Some people look at this philosophically and say, who cares, there are plenty of fish in the sea, and then get on with life. But a few will think it's the end of the world and get depressed. Then there's the pressure of your schoolwork, which usually affects not the less clever or the most hardworking students, but those who don't manage their time properly and leave everything to the last minute. So, for these and various other reasons, some people find themselves in a depression, severe clinical depression in the worst cases. Now, it's very common for people suffering from depression to be reluctant to seek professional help. I must stress, if you find yourself in a depression that doesn't get better simply by talking it over with good friends or your parents, please come to see one of our professional counselors. They have a lot of experience in helping people get through depressions. As with all our offices, they are open during normal office hours. That's 9 to 5. But in cases of emergency, one of them is on call 24 hours a day. You can see the student services emergency number on the first page of your student handbook. Now look at questions 17 to 20. As the talk continues, answer questions 17 to 20. While I do hope my talking about depression hasn't made any of you feel depressed, another one of our services is the Student Housing Office. I won't say much about this because most of you will have already dealt with the office, either to arrange accommodation in a student residence or to help you find somewhere to live off campus. We have a database of off campus housing that is updated almost daily. So if any of you are still looking, then please drop in. Now, what about fun? As you can read in the handbook, the Students' Union has dozens of clubs. Chess club, Chinese club, French club, choir, 
conservative club, liberal club, the green club, which works very closely with the university maintenance department as well as other environmental groups. And for those of you who like mountains, there's a climbing club. Well, it would take me all day to list all of our clubs and societies, and of course all the sports teams. But I do recommend that you join one or two of them. It's a great way for new students to make new friends. Mentioning sports, our brand new fitness center opened last week, and the indoor swimming pool has just been renovated. They are open from 6 a.m. to 11 at night, seven days a week, except for holidays like Christmas and the New Year. Of course, they are free of charge for students. Just show your student card. I really must recommend that you check out the new fitness center. It's got all the very latest in high-tech strength training machines, free weights room, everything you'd expect for over $25 million. Okay, we've covered counseling, housing, clubs, sports, keeping fit. What else should I mention? Oh, yes. If you're doing all these sports, climbing mountains and things, you might need to go to our sports medicine clinic. It's in the Student Health Center, which is conveniently located between the fitness center and the athletics stadium, not the football stadium. People play games and exercise seven days a week, so the clinic is open seven days a week, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The regular medical services and the Student Health Center are open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., although there's always a nurse on duty for emergencies. Treatment is free only if you have registered with the Provincial Health Plan, so make sure you take your health plan card with you if you have to see the doctor. Well, I think I've covered enough for now. I won't talk about the library or the teaching facilities, because you'll sur soon learn everything you need to learn when classes start on Monday. Thank you, and good luck to you. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two. Part 3 You will hear two friends discussing a course they have just done. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 27. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 27. Oh, Ben, I just remembered I never filled in that form for Nick. Ah. Did you do it? The course feedback form? Yes. If you want, we can do it together. I've got mine here. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look then. What do we have to do? Let's fill in the top first. Let's see. Course, course code. Uh, it's communication in business. Okay, communication in business. I do know that, but what's the code? CB16 something. CB162, isn't it? Mm, that's it. Okay, and dates. When did we start? I remember my birthday's on May 4th, and it was the day after... It must have been May 5th. Gosh, it doesn't seem that long ago, does it? No. And we finish at the end of this week on Friday, so that's uh, July 15th. Uh, 16th. Oh. Mon Monday was the 12th. Yeah. Right, that was the easy bit. <laughs> now, let's have a look. Mm. Please mm. give your comments on the following aspects of the course. OK, what's the first one? Oh, course organisation. Mm. What do you think? Uh, clear. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, I think the organisation was clear. Hmm. OK, anything else for course organisation? Um, it was a good thing he gave us the course outline at the beginning, in the first session. That was useful, so I'll put that down, shall I? Yeah. 
Now, going on to suggestions for improvement, one thing that wasn't so good, I think we could have done a bit more work at the beginning. I mean, at the beginning, it seemed dead easy. Yeah. I thought it was going to be really easy, and then all of a sudden, in the second half of the course, we got a whole load of work. Yeah. Reading to do and essays and things. Yeah, it'd be better if it was more even.、Mm. Okay, now course delivery. Does that mean teaching? Yeah, I suppose so. Well, what I thought was really good on this course was the standard of teaching. Actually, I mean, some of the teachers were better than others,、yeah. but the standard generally was fine, much better than other courses I've been on. Yeah, I agree.、Mm. Let's put that then. Okay. What about suggestions for improvement? I. I didn't think it was all that wonderful when we had great long group discussion sessions that went on for hours and hours. <laughs> right. I don't mean we shouldn't have group discussions, just that they shouldn't go on too long. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions twenty-eight to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-eight to thirty. Now on to materials and equipment. Oh, now what was good about some sessions was the handouts. Yes, I thought all the handouts were good actually, and some were great with website addresses and everything.、Mm. One problem though with materials was the key texts. Yes, there just weren't enough copies on reserve in the library. And if you can't get the key texts before the session, how are you supposed to do the reading? Yeah. And not enough computers. You have to wait ages to get one. Okay. Testing and evaluation. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say until we've got our written assignments back. Oh, don't talk about it. I only got mine in yesterday. It was a real struggle. Oh, I hate to think what mark I'll get. Yeah, but at least we've done the oral presentation.、Mm. I thought that was good. The way I got my feedback really quickly. Yes, it was, and I liked the way we knew what would be evaluated on. We knew the criteria, so we knew we had to think about. Clarity, organization, and so on. Yeah, but I'm not so sure about the written work.、Mm. One thing I think is that there's just too much. It's really stressful. Oh yes, I'd agree. And I don't see why they can't let us know the criteria they use for marking. The written assignments, but he told us. No, for the final exams.、Oh. What are they looking for? What are the criteria? What makes a pass or a fail? Yeah, I never thought of that. It'd be really useful.、Mm. Okay. Any other comments? I thought student support was excellent. Yeah, me too. Okay, excellent. Other comments? No, I can't think of anything else.、Mm, nor me. Okay, so that's done. Thanks, Ben. No, thank you. That is the end of part three. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers to part three. Part four. You will hear a student giving a presentation about a project on household waste recycling. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Well, my group has been doing a project on how household waste is recycled in Britain. We were quite shocked to discover that only 9% of people here in the UK make an effort to recycle their household waste. This is a lower figure than in most other European countries and needs to increase dramatically in the next few years if the government is going to meet its recycling targets. The agreed targets for the UK mean that by 2008 we must reduce our carbon dioxide emissions by 12.5% compared with 1990. And recycling can help to achieve that goal in two main ways. The production of recycled glass and paper uses much less energy than producing them from virgin materials. And also, recycling reduces greenhouse gas emissions from landfill sites and incineration plants. As part of our project, we carried out a survey of people in the street, and the thing that came up over and over again is that people don't think it's easy enough to recycle their waste. One problem is that there aren't enough drop-off sites, that is, the places where the public are supposed to take their waste. We also discovered that waste that's collected from householders is taken to places called bring banks for sorting and bailing into loads. One problem here is taking out everything that shouldn't have been placed in the recycling containers. People put all sorts of things into bottle banks, like plastic bags and even broken umbrellas. All this has to be removed by hand. Another difficulty is that toughened glass used for cooking doesn't fully melt at the temperature required for other glass, and so that also has to be picked out by hand. Glass is easy to recycle because it can be reused over and over again without becoming weaker. Two million tons of glass is thrown away each year. That is, seven billion bottles and jars. But only 500,000 tons of that is collected and recycled. Oddly enough, half the glass that's collected is green, and a lot of that is imported, so more green glass is recycled than the UK needs. As a result, new uses are being developed for recycled glass, particularly green glass, for example, in fiberglass manufacture and water filtration. A company called CLF Aggregates makes a product for roads, and 30% of the material is crushed glass. For recycling paper, Britain comes second in Europe with 40%, behind Germany's amazing 70%. When recycling started, there were quality problems, so it was difficult to use recycled paper in office printers, but these problems have now been solved. And Martins, based in South London, produces a range of office stationery which is 100% recycled costs the same as normal paper, and is of equally high quality. But this high quality comes at a cost in terms of the waste produced during the process. Over a third of the waste paper that comes in can't be used in the recycled paper, leaving the question of what to do with it. One firm, PaperSave, currently sells this to farmers as a soil conditioner, though this practice will soon be banned because of transport costs and the smell and the company is looking into the possibility of alternative uses. Plastic causes problems, because there are so many different types of plastic in use today, and each one has to be dealt with differently. Packrite recycles all sorts of things, from bottles to car bumpers, and one of its most successful activities is recycling plastic bottles to make containers which are used all over the country to collect waste. The Save-a-Cup scheme was set up by the vending and plastics industries to recycle as many as possible of the 3.5 billion polystyrene cups used each year. At the moment, 500 million polycups are collected, processed, and sold on to other businesses such as Waterford, which turns the cups into pencils, and Johnson & Jones, a Welch-based firm, which has developed a wide variety of items including business cards. Well, to sum up, 
There seems to be plenty of research going on into how to reuse materials. But the biggest problem is getting people to think about recycling instead of throwing things away. At least doing the research made us much more careful. That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. 